One of the things we deal with as entrepreneurs is procrastination. If you've ever had a project that you're like, I'm gonna make that course, and then three weeks later you're like, I'm working on the course, and then three months later you're like, I'm working on the course. One day I'll have the course out, or one day I'll start making regular content on my YouTube channel, or one day I'm gonna launch this product, or one day and it never happens, or it happens way later than you planned on, this video will help you because in this video I want to show you a few productivity hacks that I have found to really help me stay on task because procrastination is actually natural. Everybody procrastinates. It's just part of being human. Your brain is going to gravitate towards what's easy and meeting deadlines and completing projects even though that's very satisfying it's not easy and because it's not easy we put it off and so you have to set up systems to avoid putting things off indefinitely and that's what this video is going to help you do if you stick around at the end you'll see a very systematic way that i have learned and that i'm still tweaking but i'm discovering that this really really works to avoid procrastination and get stuff done and get stuff complete and ultimately generate revenue in your business and accomplish your goals and your objectives. So if that interests you, be sure to stick around. My name's Lane. This is my channel. It's so awesome to have you joining me today. I'm going to give you something for free that will help you stay on task and help you know what you're doing and if it's all part of the plan that you should have. And that is my super simple guide to your first $500 online. If you go to lanesebring.com slash super simple, you can get it there. The link will also be in the description. It's basically the steps that it takes to go from an idea to a profitable business. I think that if you can earn that first $500, then you can continue to earn money. It's just the way it works. If you can make 500, you can make 5,000. If you can make 5,000, you can make 50,000. And if you can do that, you can go on and on and on. But it all starts with that first 500 bucks. So I want to get you set up with a very specific plan to do that. So again, the link is in the description and it is below. Okay, so let's jump into today's topic. All of us have a tendency, a natural tendency to put things off if we can. And that's really the operative word. If we can, if we allow ourselves, if it's possible to put something off, we'll do it. This is why when you're in school and your professor or your teacher gives you a deadline that the paper has to be turned in by X date, you'll get the paper done because it needs to be turned in. In the same way that if a bill is due, you're gonna pay it on time to avoid the late fee. And if you're smart, you'll set everything up on automation so you don't have to think about it, right? But we have deadlines in our lives and the problem is when you work for you and you're the boss and you're the business, then you can easily set deadlines and just break them. Or you can have ideas of what you want to do and they're just indefinite ideas that never materialize. The way that you go from that to actually completing things is a process that you have to be intentional about. That's what we're going to talk about in this video. Because if something can happen anytime, it's never going to happen. Right? If the project can happen anytime, if the course you're going to make or the product you're going to develop or the page on your site that's going to be a landing page where you can get coaching clients, if that can happen anytime, it's going to happen no time. It's never going to happen. So you have to set up the things in place. So let's dig into the way to think about procrastination and the way to think about actually getting things done. The first thing is, and I get this from the book Atomic Habits by James Clear, which I highly recommend. There will be a link to it in the description. He distinguishes between goals and systems. A goal is an outcome that you want, right? A system is actually the things that you do to get there. So for example, let's say that you're a coach of a sports team. Your goal might be to win championships, but the system is how you recruit players, how you run your practices, how you organize your assistant coaches, and how you show up on game day. That's your system, and then the goal stays the same, win championships. So if your goal is create this product, but you have no system to get there, your goal doesn't matter. Your systems don't rise to the level of your goals, your goals fall to the level of your systems. So if you want bigger goals, you have to raise your systems. You have to actually do the inputs required to make a, the necessary outcome. This is why in my business, I don't really stress 
over revenue goals, I have revenue goals, and I have things I wanna do, but the thing I really put my focus on is my input, not outcome. Outcome is something I can't control, the market's gonna decide a lot of that, but what I can control is my own inputs. The time that I spend, the system that I have, the process that I commit to, and the discipline that I have along the way will eventually point me toward my goal. Having a goal with no system is useless. That goal is gonna to fall to the level of the system. So the first thing you need to do is when you identify something that you want to accomplish, you have to think about not just, oh, I wanna get this done by the end of October. Okay, that's fine, but what are the steps that are gonna be required to get me there? And when do I start? Like, how can I get started doing that stuff right now so that that goal is something that becomes an inevitability? It's just something that will happen or I'll get close to it. I'll get as close to the things that I can control about it and I might even exceed it because my system is solid. Once you have your goal and you have your systems, you have to start thinking in terms of when are these things due? Okay, if you're gonna do things, when, is it, when are things due each step along the way? And if you're the boss, you have to do something where you set imaginary deadlines. And this is something that comes from Parkinson's law, which is the law that has to do with time. And what this states is that the work expands to the time allotted for its completion. There's lots of people who have written extensively on this. Tim Ferriss is one of them. I just want to summarize how I've applied this in my business. So if work expands to the time allotted for its completion, here's what that means. Let's say that you have a vacation coming up and you're gonna leave for your vacation on a Wednesday, which means you're gonna lose Thursday and Friday of work. You're gonna leave Wednesday night. So you've got Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday to get all of your week's work done because you wanna go on this vacation and you wanna have everything behind you. You don't have to be worried about work. And so here's what happens. Your five-day week has now turned into a three-day week. Well, guess what? You're probably, if you're like me, if you're like a lot of people, you're gonna work very hard those three days because you don't wanna be worried about your work when you're on vacation. You're gonna get all kinds of work done because you have an actual deadline. Because Thursday and Friday, you're gonna be out of town, you don't wanna be thinking about work. That is Parkinson's law. The work expands to the time allotted for its completion. So let's take another week. Let's say you have the exact same amount of work, but you got five days to complete it. Guess what? That work's gonna take five days. And it doesn't matter that you could do it in three. If you have five, the work is gonna find a way to expand to all five days. They are in college and you have a paper due. If you have a paper that's due in two weeks, you're gonna take two weeks to write the paper. If for some reason you have a paper that's due in 24 hours, you're gonna take 24 hours to write the paper. And guess what? In both cases, the paper is gonna probably be about the same quality because it doesn't matter that you have longer or shorter, the fact is the deadline is there and you're gonna meet that deadline and do what it takes. If you have to stay up all night doing the research, putting it together, you're gonna to do it because the work is going to expand only so much as the time given for the work and its completion. So if you use Parkinson's law to your advantage, what you can begin to do is set imaginary deadlines and squish the amount of time that you have to get something done. So this again is part of your system. So if you have no system, this doesn't work. You have to have a system of here's when I work, here's what I do, here's the steps required to get to my goal, and here's when they are due. And you have to set those deadlines and hold yourself to them at every step of the way. And how this comes into play is something that I like to use, which is called the 12 week year. If you Google 12 week year, you can find a whole book and a set of resources around it, but it's a goal setting system that throws out the annual planning way of doing things and says, let's not focus on 52 weeks or 12 months, let's focus on 12 weeks. And let's have four cycles of goals every year where we have a 12 week plan, where we have an outcome goal, but then we break it down into 12 steps. What are, the, what are the steps? What is the system? What are the actions that are gonna lead to this particular goal? And so with this, every single week is a new deadline. So if you think about it, if you wanna make a product and you say 12 weeks from now, I wanna have this completed product in the market ready for sale. 
Well, then work backwards and say, okay, what do I need to do this week and the next week and the next week and the next week? Set those deadlines and stick to them. Write them down and stick to them every single week. And then finally, if you're an entrepreneur, the other thing that you can do along with all these other hacks and tools is commit yourself externally. And here's what I mean. Typically when you're in a situation where you you actually have a boss, you actually have someone who's like, you know, breathing down your neck and standing over your shoulder and they're responsible for your performance. They're going to be writing your performance reviews. If you underperform, they can let you go. So you have that pressure, that external pressure of like, there's someone watching my work. If you're an entrepreneur, you don't have that. What you can do is you can actually set up external accountability. You can do this through having a coach who's asking you along the way, hey, are you working on this? Have you got this done? Or you can actually make your customers, your audience, part of your external accountability. Here's the way this works. Some people, if they're gonna build a course, they'll put a date on the calendar and they'll tell their audience, hey, on X date, such and such course is coming out. It's gonna be awesome. You can sign up for it here and it will be ready for sale on this date. And then they have to work backwards and meet that deadline. And for a lot of people, that's all the pressure that it takes because if they fail to meet their deadline, they're gonna let down a whole lot of people, it's gonna damage their reputation, it's gonna damage the trust that they have with their audience who said, yeah, if you got this thing, you're putting it out there, I wanna buy it, it's gonna damage all that so they won't do it, they're gonna meet that deadline. When you put all these things together, you've got systems, not just goals, you've got systems that support your goals. You're working in Parkinson's law and you realize that the work expands to the time allotted for its completion. So you minimize the time allowed and you create imaginary deadlines. You use the 12 week year. So you're not just thinking about annually, you're thinking about just months at a time, weeks at a time, what you want to accomplish. And then you set up some kind of external system to hold you accountable. If you do all four of those things on a regular basis with big and small things that you want to accomplish, what's going to happen is procrastination is going to become very difficult for you to do. And that's really what you want to do. It's a natural thing to procrastinate. So don't fight against nature. Just create some friction between you and what comes naturally. So if you make it hard to procrastinate because you have all these barriers in the way, it's going to be way easier to go ahead and get things done. And then you're going to meet your goals and you're going to have the kind of business that you want to have. So that's my hope for you. I hope this video was valuable to you. I want you to share with me in the comments, what do you procrastinate on and how do you overcome procrastination? I'd love to learn from you down in the comments comments. Be sure to give this video a like if you haven't yet, and I will see you in the next video.